Today I'm going to be showing how to reseat your intake and exhaust valves on a flathead engine. This could be a large lawnmower or most snow blowers. This is a Tecumseh engine. To start off, I have my engine down in a compression stroke where each of these should be closed. The one on the left is the intake and the one on the right is exhaust and you can see it is open slightly on the or or for part of the compression stroke and that is why fumes are making it out of the exhaust pipe and that's why sometimes when it shuts off it may backfire that happens or after a lot of use the exhaust pipe may turn a cherry red and I have to turn the throttle down to get rid of that and that reduces my power. The easiest way to check this is to put your fingers on here and try to turn them. This one is nice and tight but this one can kinda easily be moved. It takes a little work but it moves around. And to check this I have a feeler gauge that I got at Napa Auto Parts. This can be picked up at any auto store. And for this type of engine, the intake valve is supposed to have a clearance of an eight thousandths of an inch and the exhaust is supposed to have a twelfth thousandths of an inch. These are some of the smaller feelers in this set because this is a full set. You can also buy a part set that's cheaper. This cost six dollars. Okay, I'm gonna start off with this one. Try to stick the feeler gauge in there. Here I go. It may be challenging to get it in, but once it's in, it should be able to slide back and forth underneath there. This one feels just about fine. It would be okay if it was a little bit less or actually a little bit bigger opening but this is actually fine because it's seated properly. Now the other one is a little bit thicker. This other one is the one on engines that usually gets messed up first because over years this wears down and gets lower I have a video of me just grinding these for they'd be better seated. I'll put a link in here for that video. I'm not going to do that again today. Okay, so this is the issue with the engine. This will not fit in at all. Let's see if even the smaller eighth would fit in there. nothing it will not fit so that's what the issue is I'm gonna leave this one alone this one I don't have the spring compressor because I don't do this often I'm just gonna use two screwdrivers I'm gonna release release the clip for the spring becomes loose and then I can pull the whole thing out through the top what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a grinder you can also use a file and lightly shave the edge just hold on there for maybe a few seconds on that grinder, then put it back in here. I'm going to see if it fits right, because I don't want to shave off too much. You can always shave off more, but you can never add it back. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, using two screwdrivers, I finally got this disconnected. Took a little while to get the hang of it, but now that I did it once, I could probably do it a bunch more times very quickly. The only way I've, I'm able to do this with a screwdriver is I use something like this as a fulcrum to lift up the spring while I use another screwdriver to pop this out. That's what I do. Now that that's out, I'm going to lift it. Now it's out of here. Now the end of this needs to be ground down. Twelve thousandths of an inch and because it's something so precise you can use a grinder 
a circular grinder that uses a wheel like this. This is a four inch wheel. Usually they're bigger. You could use that, but this moves fast and digs fast. So to be more precise, I'm gonna go ahead and use something like this. Just a regular file, go along it, back and forth. I'll probably do that for a minute. And then I'm gonna wipe it down, make sure no shavings go back into the machine because that could cause unnecessary wear. And I'm gonna put it back in there, reconnect the spring, use the gapper. If I have to, I may have to take it out a second time and do it even more. But I'm gonna put the camera down because I wanna make sure I grind this flat. Okay, I've just finished. I put it back in. I had to remove it two more times after I showed it and I had to put it back in the place to test it. Now I can get the number 12, the 12 thousandths of an inch. It fits in here kind of nicely. If I push it too, too far, it gets a little snug, but that's perfect. It goes right through. So the gapping now is proper for this engine. I'm not gonna grind it again like I did on my other video because that was actually just two weeks ago. And since I did that, I got more burnt in here. I'm just gonna wipe that down with a paper towel before I put this back together. Now it's nicely so the both of the caps or the valves go nicely. Let's see. Now it's in the compression stage. Yeah, I can't move that at all, even with the puff of pliers. That's so nice and tight now. Shouldn't have any more leaks of fumes. Like again, I'm gonna wipe this down. That means the oil is circulating nicely. Also in here, I'm gonna wipe this down just to make sure nothing is in there. Like while I was doing it, I noticed my tools tracked in a few pieces of grass. I'm just gonna wipe this down with a regular paper towel before shutting it. I'm gonna put the engine back together. And a good thing to do when the engine's apart like this, I am going to oil every moving part on the machine from the wheels to the engine parts. Something else I want to mention, when I was taking this apart, all the screws for the engine head, before cracking them, I put penetrating oil on them. That reduces the chance of breaking them off if they're severely rusted. I'm going to open the exhaust valve again. And I'm going to squirt some oil onto the center piece to reduce friction when the machine is running. Okay. I'm going to turn that now while it's open. Drop it down a few times. Back up. Turn it some more just to get that oil moving around in there. That's good. All these little parts got to be oiled. And this time when I open this up, oil dripped down. I wiped that up. It poured all down here because this had a little bit of oil in there. That usually happens if you recently ran it. If it's been sitting around a while, it'll go back down the hole into the oil reservoir. I can usually remember where everything goes, but just in case I labeled some things on a piece of paper, or this is a piece of old drywall, just for I can make sure I put everything in the right place. Usually I don't need that, that's just in case, because some of the bolts look the same, but the threads are slightly different. Like this, I'm going to wipe that down again, and where the spark plug is, wipe that down. 
but there's no uh, chance. Some pieces of grass there, I can just wipe this up. I'm going to clean down all these pieces before putting them back together. I'm going to wipe down the seal. The good thing about the old engines are the seals back then were made out of a kind of metal. It's like a soft metal. These are reusable seals. If your machine is new or if they've been replaced, you have to replace them every single time if you have the newer type. But the old-fashioned seals, they made them nice back then. You can put them nicely back together. Here's the air, air filter. That looks pretty clean. It's soaked with oil. That can go back the way it is. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I will do another video of all the lubrication points that I check.